Welcome to Gendy Month here at Content Breaker this Ooh. week. It's Symbiotic Titan. Sim. Bionic Titan. Titan. Yes. First off, he's Kai. I'm Kels. We're joined by strangely entertaining and Babble Force Dog. Gentlemen, how bionically Titan are you simly? I, have, I rewatched uh, Citrus one... this week, if that tells you <laughs> <y'all> anything. <laughs> tells me you're a glutton for punishment. I needed something I could control to hurt me. <laughs> yeah. I have um, the heart to do the podcast today. <laughs> what the? the heart. Maybe not the, the body. Mind. Body and mind. <laughs> not the mind, just the heart. Oh just the heart God. today. <laughs> that... Okay, it's a kids <laughs> show. It's a it's a teen show. Is it that really? Was kind of basic. Yes. I would say there's but, some uh, stuff in here I wouldn't oh, necessarily oh, want my was, kids to look at. I've but... done the research. Uh-huh. My academic ho ass was like, look for interviews, and so we have one whole interview. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but information from Gandhi about his take and his whole. whole passion and decision making behind the creative process for symbiotic titan so the premise all right symbiotic titan again the tartakovsky animation uh of course with brian andrews and paul rudish co-creators the boys um back in 2010 they were like we're gonna make 20 episodes of a giant robot teen drama so the premise Three aliens of high school age land on Earth to one, find a replacement planet, and two, hide the princess away from the evils that are taking over the control of Galuna. Galaluna. Uh, Goddamn evil empire. (laughs) Teen drama and robot battles ensue. I do. How did y'all feel about this in kind of introductory, spoiler free opinions? That's good shit. I feel like this should be watched by people who enjoy cartoons who want more of an anime feel. If that, I gotta judge my words carefully for Zog, but I feel like the general population <laughs> knows the, the, what I the, mean. The, his face uh, says okay. it all, really. It says. Well, it's didn't... like, you know, those people who are like, you know, like, I would put this in the same vein as, like, you know, Castlevania invincible arcane that like type of like vibe that's where i would put symbiotic titan so if someone's like yo what's something it's like if i started off watching anime if it's my friend juan who's like yo why didn't anybody tell me castlevania or invincible or lit because he's like more so of an anime watcher and i'd be like yo you just gotta look for the stuff in the west that's coming out it's hidden like that this is something i would recommend to him and amphibia (laughs) <laughs> I would agree. You know, this is definitely um Japanese inspired, but also oh, yeah. in the most western of animation traditions. Like Cartoon Network has its kind of whole ethos attached to this because Gendy was making shit for Cartoon Network for 15 years before this, you know. The mm-hmm, thing yeah. that you vibe with in a lot of Gendy's shows for Cartoon Network, it's got the same kind of warm, fuzzy tone yeah. in terms of Gendy feeling, not like yeah. it's warm. I was so about to is... say, I was like, the giant tower monster didn't strike me as warm and fuzzy, but... It's nostalgic. <laughs> well, and... he was very warm, not so fuzzy. Yeah. <laughs> so... continue, sorry. I mean, everyone enjoy. everyone agrees absolutely take time for 20 episodes of Gendy and friends making cool stuff oh yeah it's yeah. absolutely it, great. go and watch the show it's worth it it's just one season unfortunately uh and if you want an idea of what to expect when you watch it uh Gendy was inspired by a godzilla marathon he watched with his kid and how like into it his kid got 
So giant kaijus fighting giant robot. I mean, that's the most non spoilery I can get without uh, leaving you completely in the dark. Yeah. With a wholesome plot. Yes, lots of plot. Surprising. Yeah. Well, oh my God. there's a hell of a lot of plot. It's <laughs> a lot of plot. There's plot, and there are teenage oh. relatable things. <laughs> so, Shake a big booty quick. <laughs> Yeah, That's what I did in high school. <laughs> they were really uh they had their finger on the pulse of uh 2010s teens, I suppose. So let's touch base, okay? Semionic Titan. Made, of course, by Gendy Tartakovsky. And friends, we've got Brian Andrews and Paul Rudish. Let's talk about kind of where we are. Okay, this is Gendy's fourth production for like in collaboration with Cartoon Network. Okay. In 2005, he stepped away uh, from television production to go be the creative president for Orphanage Animation Studios in 2005. Right after the Clone Wars miniseries happened, he was like, all right, I'm going to go do something else. And that really focused on commercials and uh, feature-length animated films. But in an interview in 2010, right before uh, Symbionic Titan came out, Gendy was talking with uh, News Zone, Toon Zone News in 2010. Wow. Um, he was drawn back to TV production because the quick and exciting pace, whereas when you make a feature like film, it's just so incredibly excruciating to like spend all this time making a thing and then to finally get it like published and everything is just so oh production wise. So he was like, I'm gonna go back and make a TV show uh with his friends. Talk about Brian Andrews. Th- this is the part that's excited me because I'm like this Man. is my goat right here. Yes. Um, so there's this guy named Tunerific Tariq who does, like, retrospectives on old cartoons and everything. He just recently did um, My Life as a Teenage Robot. And I got to see more depth into Brian Andrews. And this man not only did that, he also was heavily involved in Jackie Chan Adventures, which I fucking All right. love. All right. And, like, Samurai Jack, and I believe it's not the... Gindy Clone Wars, but the other Clone Wars. I think so. He was in. I think Liam. this was the guy involved in both. Okay, there was a guy on both teams who. Okay, uh, then that must have been him. I know he was involved in the Disney Clone Wars. I call it that one. I think he was also involved in in Gendy's Clone Wars because he he was a writer on it. Oh, okay. and. Uh... The only part Disney had for any of the Clone Wars was season seven of the that got put on Disney Plus. Everything else came up before Disney's that. Clone Wars for yes. Yeah, so the differentiation. No, okay, we'll find yeah, out. Yeah, three Clone Wars. The other one, the three D. Yes, one. <laughs> the three D Clone Wars that is prominently found on Disney Plus, but can also be found nowhere else so uh, originally <laughs> broadcast on cartoon network here or there or jet x very yeah, strange you, world we live in it was on jet x wasn't it yeah yeah man that's crazy i know it's uh, also on by disney Sorry. of course brian andrews also worked on what else joseph and the king of dreams <laughs> uh, that was that was a, a surprising one for me but you know yeah surprising i would have gotta start somewhere <laughs> i would have been more impressed if it was prince of egypt but king of dreams is all right. Sorry. Sorry. I mean, not everybody. If he worked, if he would have worked on, uh, what's the call it? Uh, <laughs> Prince of Egypt as well, we would have been so up. Like, you can't really, like, you can't go 30 for 30, you know, unless you're Michael Jordan. So, <laughs> if this man had done all this and Prince of Egypt, like, I, he oh, would retire nice. as the GOAT. But so. you know, as as Kai, as you pointed out, um, Jackie Chan Adventures is one of the shows that I think really has an influence in terms of experience, right? Yes. Um, that Samurai Jack, in terms of the action we'll get to later, 
those are two shows that I would absolutely relate the the quality of of action and choreography and the editing to like follow the action. Both of those shows, uh, Samurai right. Jack and, and Jackie Chan Adventures, scream. I learned this somewhere else, and that that's that explains it. Um, yes. Of course, rounding out our three co-creators is Paul Ruddish. Um, started out as a character designer and storyboard artist for Batman the Animated Series, and then went on to be involved in all the Gendy fun with uh, with art direction for you know Dexter's Laboratory and the Powerpuff Girls and Samurai Jack and 2003 The Clone Wars and he's gone on to do other things like Disney shorts for Mickey Mouse like big big name um in his field so basically Symbionic Titan is the boys just making cool shit and I love which it. is all you can ask for like I want to say this the Symbionic Titan came out now it would have never gotten canceled because it would have been I feel like we're starving for something like Symbiotic Titan right now. Like we have like these shows. Like, you see how crazy people went over Invincible and Arcane. Like and I feel like they were just itching for something with like that quality. And I feel like Symbiotic Titan had that quality. It was just before its time. It was one of those where it was like cursed because it came out before like, you know, two thousand tens, we were like what? Tenth grade? ninth grade a little bit younger um we were still in high school we couldn't like basically our generation couldn't basically like you know push the market like we can now so i feel like that's why we see success with arcane and events and all that stuff because we're old enough to purchase our own streaming service we're old enough to do all this stuff on amazon ourselves so like we can drive the market but before it was like symbiotic titan didn't really click with the younger age and it didn't really click with like the older age of like you know those type of people but like gindy's army which is the most cringiest thing i feel like i'm gonna say this podcast <laughs> is now sufficient we'll until like you know monetary comfortability so if this let's came out with, now i'm let's convinced go with e3 instead of gindy's army you said e3 g3 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 galactic global gindy force <laughs> it's the it's the alien fighters from yeah. The show. Anyways. Yeah. I feel like Kennedy's army sounds more like culty. Dumbledore's army, and it sounds <laughs> it's exactly very like culty. It you mean the DA? Dumbledore was a narc. Oh my god. All right. We should have brought more toys. That's all. They, should have gone out. <laughs> they didn't have any. Speaking of toys, let's get into the show. Our characters, three aliens. Two of them regular ass aliens. One of them not quite a man. Not only a robot. It's dude. It's a man robot. Yes. It's uh, how do we feel about our uh, our main three cast? So Lance is dope. <laughs> Lana's dope. Octus is. Are you gonna tell me? You don't care for Octus? There's... No, let me finish. I was trying to well, say I, like, I can't so say this on podcast. The stop is. I was gonna say Octus is the Slayer. Another word before Slayer, and I was like, I can't say that. But Octus is that guy. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> like the other two are dope, but Octus is my dude. Um, shout out to. I feel that though. I feel that. like <laughs> I, Octus is my most enjoyable character, and he bagged the girl. So. Hoorah, Octus, Lance, close second. <laughs> Lana is also dope. I like the whole cast for this. I had no complaints with any of their characters. I felt like, you know, the mind, body, and heart were all represented very well throughout this. And I felt like the Voltron vibe they had going really worked. I love that we had to have this kind of bi mind, body, heart thing just to explain who everyone was. <laughs> and then we immediately didn't touch on it ever, again. ever nope. again. Like thank it was like, all metaphorical, you know. Oculus was always using his brain. Lance was a body type guy, doing his fucking setups in a bar in his room that's never canonically there again. But like you know, <laughs> and then Lana was like, 
I won't be a cheerleader. But okay. Go live your side story. It was it was interesting. I remember first time watching she, it in like Lance's. She got that heart shaped Unibeam on her robot suit. Yeah. Did yeah, she the heart? She the heart. Lance is definitely the body you could shred cheese on his abs for whatever reason. I'm just like. <laughs> just, holy shit. It was very strange. detailed, though. I mean, uh, You're right. That was wa- very detailed. Watching it, but... watching it back, I was like, I forgot how like detailed, like everybody's like, like even the just the faces, like when Ocul- Oculus he, uh, turns into the dad and he's got the wrinkles, the neighbor lady with the wrinkles and everything. It was oh like, Barbara, I, yeah Barbara. I'm like, I forget how everybody has lines, especially the general. The general got like the whole neck thing going on. I was like, what is that? <laughs> You can see his Adam's apple for days. It's crazy. Hot. No, not hot. It was just detailed. No, it's just, it's... That's what you mean, strange. Say it was hot. Uh, no, because it wasn't. Side characters. <laughs> Side characters. I really messed with her name's not Jenny. I don't want to keep calling Kimmy. her Jenny. Kimmy. Kimmy, yes. Kimmy. I really messed with Kimmy. Like, I liked her. I liked, like I said, uh, Barbara was a lot. Her daddy comment had me messed up one time. She was like, Father, maybe I should call you daddy. And I'm like, oh, there's a rewatch of the doll is hidden. <laughs> like, <laughs> definitely hidden. <laughs> um, Solomon was dope. I enjoyed Solomon. He was kind of like a whole kind of I like mysterious he's, he, type vibe. He was the straight man. Like the whole time, even though he was in charge of the secret alien organi- or alien finding organization, but he's like, we don't got time for this. We gotta do the yes. stuff. We gotta get the. <laughs> Kristen, best girl, I'm saying that right now. <laughs> Kristen and Kimmy tie for best girl. Kristen, but Kristen running. The emo Lance. girl who flirted with Lance for like two seconds in one episode. Yeah, who beat his and ass, then, and then like they got in. Like your form is off. Mm-hmm. And then she didn't go to the dance. Man, we're setting up for the other ten episodes. Them ten scripts that never got made, never got yeah. finished. Man, Said I want, I want explanations, and we'll get to that later. I want like there's so many questions left. <laughs> oh yeah, yes. Uh, do you feel our pain now? <laughs> sure. I. I do, man. But no, absolutely. Uh, Kristen, where where I love the big intro part where it's like, I said hey to you in the hallway one time. He's like, oh. And then he disappeared. I feel like, yeah, just kind of like that. And be like that, you know? Yeah. But right. just shout out to Kristen. Static has a gold golden chick cup. <laughs> Mind your business. Wondering you. why you're not minding your business, you know? Okay, all right, never mind. Also, um, shout out to Meat. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a ad, Golden Chick, strange. Why are you frightening me? <laughs> like, I'm such a you talk question. trash about it all the time. Anyway, sorry. I've... Listen, I've been going through it the past week, sir. <laughs> Read your newsletter and you wouldn't know that. But um, Shout out to Solomon. Yeah, shout out to Solomon. The biblical one or the symbiotic one? Yes, Somebody I think that's the point. <laughs> yes. Oh, Shout out Jesus. Shout out wrist. <laughs> Shout out Stone. Um, Great. any other side characters you care to talk about? The, um, I felt like the king was. Most cool. of them really only had their one gag that they would come back and do. Uh, outside of Kimmy, the king. Uh, a little bit of Kristen and the general and Solomon. Most of them weren't going to be expanded on very much unless the show ran for like five seasons. Yeah, Those were the main group of like side characters. The the main three we're going to get. Ashi 497. Also known as Mushy. Also known as Tardox. Also known as 497. Poor Mushy. I feel bad for Mushy. No, y'all. Sometimes you just gotta go, man. Sometimes you gotta be the, the world's scariest cute thing. Also, shout uh, out to destroying uh, Courage the Cowardly Dog's house. 
That's another thing. I love how every time, in every episode, the destruction carries over. That's an attention to detail you don't see a whole lot. Man, in the uh, in the one where they're where um, what's his bucket joins a band, where Lance just learns yeah. a car and then joins a band, and him and the other guy are like playing acoustic guitar outdoors next to like the pair of like disembodied <laughs> legs. <laughs> it was fucking great. No, they I, change I love... the scenery so often, all because of these giant monster attacks. As it should it's be. Awesome. No, I love the detail. That's the detail that makes somebody like Titan a absolute fucking banger, man. The, like, literally. Sorry, continue. Were you? I good. Um, but like, just the fact that like those small details that you see in other like aspects, and I feel like here's I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna say it. I feel like a lot of stuff that separates like animation in the West and animation in the um East is the details, the devil in the details. One thing about cartoons, North just in the West, they never change outfits. Then you go and see like stuff in the East, there's always different outfits. And that's what we saw, you know, symbiotic brought in those elements of the East, like the different outfits, the different vibes, like them doing new things, like you said, like the destruction still being in the back. And also like just the like themes that were tackled in this are just so like freaking if you look at like non Gendy Dark cartoons and you go and you're like, hey, comparing Symbiotic Titan to like what else was out in two thousand ten? Um Lord uh, else I'm out here. Like I don't remember. Yeah. Adventure uh, Zone maybe? Season Thunder- seven of <laughs> The Thundercats reboot. Oh, shit. that was actually good, oh, but that got hold too. So uh, that pisses so, me off to a whole nother level. Although, <laughs> if you look into the plans they had for season two, I'm not sure I wanted it. I would have taken was at least get weird. <laughs> at least let me be disappointed. I'll take weird over not having it at all. Like that's fair. At least finish so, what you started. You know. But. Yeah, like you, Thundercats hold me because they went out on a good note. Whether what happened was weird was to be predetermined, but Thundercats was actually freaking dope while we had it. You know, I was loving seeing Lionel suffer, man. I was like, <laughs> this is great. Like, <laughs> I need suffer to see you, if my bitch. dude gonna be okay. But now nah, they did him dirty. Oh, they did him dirty. Anyway, 2010s so, was a kind year for Western animation. Like, you compare this to like. Season six of Fairly Odd Parents. I don't know, um, or a show like I. I personally messed with this more than I did with like Flapjack. I think Flapjack came out like 2010. That was trash. If that's the bar we're going with. No, that's then... not the bar. But I'm saying like just comparing it. Like, like don't get me wrong. There isn't a comparison. Flapjack is utter fucking garbage. Yes, Uncle Cracker also garbage. And I'll fucking what? say it. I you mean Uncle Grandpa. Show. Not Uncle Cracker. <laughs> like, I can't believe you. Oh, sorry, Uncle Grandpa. Grandpa. My bad. Yeah, Uncle okay. Cracker is so, a musician. So, comparable shows for theme and other bullshit, <laughs> right? Because mm-hmm. this is this is taking a more mature teenage audience viewpoint. I mean, you've got Generator Rex. You've got Ben Ten Ultimate Alien, where they're like. Mm-hmm old now um that's fine we've Which... got adventure time but mm-hmm. adventure time is just you know it's, okay so it did come out around that time yeah, yeah. It's, 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 to... it's smokers you know yeah it was trying to find its footing around that one i didn't like Which it adventure didn't do time. until like this final season like honestly i feel like symbolic time might have been the last thing i enjoyed coming from cartoon network because either this or regular show but i didn't like finish regular show because I was just like too much. Um, Show also had 261 episodes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely just finished that. But um. 221 or 16 episodes of. Uh... <laughs> yeah. Apparently, it got more. really deep at some point, like because like all the characters actually died in the like season. And it, anyway, but enough about well, that. Like he experienced oh. with this show, you got to grow up at some point. Yeah, True. and and I think the challenge here is that 2010 was too soon. 
as, as yeah. you had said before. Mm -hmm. It's too soon for <clears throat> more mature animation in the West. Um, mm -hmm. especially with networks putting it out like Cartoon Network. You know, Cartoon Network was like, all right, we're going to hard pivot to anything but this shit, which is why they only gave it 20 episodes. They got into pineapple trouble by 2014, and we're like, okay, uh, abort. Live yeah, action yeah. stuff. I, Destroy I honestly think I honestly think it was just the financial trouble that really killed this thing because – Hell, even Ben 10, when it did Alien Force, had much more mature storytelling going along with it. And they straight up said, hey, stop that and go back to the uh, storytelling you had in the original. People liked that one. We had more what? views and got more money. And Which was wild. Better. Yeah. Yeah. Which was wild because Ben 10 Alien Force is like, I don't want to say peak Cartoon Network, but it's like pretty damn close. Like, Awesome and Alien or Alien Force was like some real, real shiznit. Which, have we done that on the podcast? No. We have done no Ben 10. What is no the ben matter 10. with us? It's we gotta a find lot. Time. The, You're the, a lot. The, no, the worry. Ben 10 black hole is gigantic now Look, because man, of the whole like, reboot series. Like, it's it's off fuck, the rails. No, fuck the reboot series. There, you don't, there's nothing to Listen, do with that. Listen, the reboot series, just, hold on, I haven't, I haven't watched it regular canon shit for <laughs> what Ben 10 was before the reboot and <laughs> that's a black hole honestly that you won't escape on for hours I just want to see it because that's the closest season other season of Generator X I'm getting even though apparently it ended Probably. I looked up uh, Generator X kind of ended I was like what I thought it didn't end I was anyways. I mean it eventually just stopped so yes it did end there <laughs> is a mix it's like a meme. It's like the people dancing in the hood, but it's to the Ben 10 theme song, like the OG one, and it fits so perfectly, and that's like my favorite thing ever. It's like you just see him like dance on top of cars. One dude pulls out his gun, and it's like the alien daddy. It's just, I'll, I'll share it later. It's, it's so great. Please do. Huh. Okay. Diamond head forever. But, so, <laughs> back Ty to Simba. Tionic, Tionic of Simbi. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm too sober for this shit. Ah, we need I'm... to reboot him. Um, <laughs> all right. Over for this. Let's talk about the plot. We have the characters, teenage, giant robot drama. The plot. It's kind of episodic. You it know? is absolutely episodic. But it's got an operatic, like, overarching story that if you miss a bunch of episodes, you're not going to know what's going on. It's, yes. yeah. it's very Monster of the Week. But, yeah, no, you do not want to miss episodes for this thing. Why would you uh, miss an episode? Like, this is one of those, like, it's Monster of the Week, but I would highly suggest you watch every single episode. Because maybe when I was airing, it. it was your dad's weekend, and you had to switch houses, so you couldn't see it, because he yeah. had cable. Don't, don't that wasn't miss... my story, but that's probably somebody's they, story. They got reruns, try and catch up. Yeah, don't miss episode three or, but, uh... or ten. No, the characters actually actively changed, like, sometimes episode to episode. Mm -hmm. You would actually see um, a shift in the status quo almost, like, every four episodes. It's like, it's like you learned how to follow the rules, Lance. Doesn't it feel good? And you learned how to break them. Well, only when I need to. No, I meant the milk you're drinking is expired. <gasps> It's expired. I'm gonna go throw up. <laughs> that was, God damn. That was, that I, was the best. I love how episodic it is, mm -hmm. and that it doesn't get like multiple episode related until yeah. the finale. Like the yeah. last three episodes are back to back to back, like connected. You have to watch them in order. But it is absolutely pick up an episode, watch it. You get a complete A plot, and then you watch them in order to get a full arc. Yeah. It, it's not essential to watch them all in order, but it does help. Mm. I mean, if you skip like two or three episodes somewhere in the middle, the biggest question you might get is, where did Lance get a car? <laughs> but that's about it. <laughs> that's I mean, my first like, favorite episode. Just favorite watch episode. it like timeline chronological. 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 Oh, you were doing episode the same 16. Thing Clockways. Episode 16, episode 1, through everything else. 
yeah, to Star was, Wars. That was weird. Or you could even like episode what ten nine something like that where oh, Lance, yeah, like Lance's the, backstory, oh, like back backstory. Yeah, the back yeah. backstory. So nine, sixteen, one. <laughs> God damn. Like it, it, like it works, but it's just like ah, oh, this was in order. But a lot of the individual episode plots are monster based like, and like character story based. You know, like yeah. Newton becoming like getting a girlfriend because he. Taught Kim how he's to, like, the, because he's the one guy who's not just like, oh, you pretty, please get on my dick. <laughs> Kimmy. 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 Um, Kimmy probably but, uh, if Zack something. Snyder can make millions of dollars making movies out of out of order stories, this show can do it just fine. Yeah. Um, but we have a broader plot about the space aliens crash landing and landing on Earth and having to hide. Um, and throughout this, we get more information about, you know, uh, Gala Luna and what's going on and how we got here in the first place. And that all kind of culminates with the complete backstory in episode 16, where we're like, Lance is now grown up through his training and we find out, oh, he has a past. What's his past like? Because, you know, uh, right. what's your buckets like? Oh, how did she, how did my dad choose you? Yeah. Uh, uh, Lena? Orphan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Turns out, orf- uh, good friend's kid get- got to be an orphan, and he was like, military school, go. Because yeah, uh, that, we- that helps everybody. Uh, nope. But, you know, we get the whole, we get to see an awesome, you know, kind of space war. My girl was like, that's just fucking Star Wars. And I'm like, funny you say that. And, and Star Wars <laughs> is just fucking Dune. And. Well, we're letting it back to Gendy's time in, in yeah. Star Wars. <laughs> uh, to which. And Dune's is, just fucking. The constant sci-fi comparisons just... with this shit. Oh, my God. Okay. I want to talk about this right now. Oh. The action, yes. the action, the choreography, it's clean. the fight scenes, clean, all clean, all of them. As all they say them. in the community of my peers, they were boxing. Like <laughs> they were going out here, and they were like straight up boxing. Like the freaking mech fights, and the fact that like you just can't bring like teeth to the fight because he might bring a sight, he might bring a bow and arrow. You just know he bring in hands with whatever he brings out. Like, that is fire. I love the choreography. I loved how it, like, melts. It literally gave me, like... It gave me what I wish. It gave me good Power Ranger mech fights. Hear me out now. Like, and those are, in my opinion, like... Yes. Boom. <laughs> now, it, yeah. Like the ones like I would say I would say Dino Thunder and SPD has some of the cleanest like mech fights for me. And it gave me like that feel of like just because you're big doesn't mean you just have to like stomp on shit and explodes. It's like, okay, we're doing this, we're like being active, we're using our environment, like, but we're also still like actually remembering hands instead of just waving our hand and stuff breaks, you know. Like, and we in squat mode, damn it. When you hit him with that flying knee, and he mm-hmm. falls into that building, it also it fucking no explodes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Like, <sighs> I just... But go ahead, like, yeah, the fight scenes, yeah. And that in yeah, combination yeah. with um, early on when they get captured by the G3, and we see Lance and Kane... Solomon in disguise fighting the same way and Lance is like and it's a clean ass fight scene as they're like mm-hmm. you know, uh, symmetrical and Lance is like how did you learn how to fight like this and Kane's like how did you yeah it's a whole deal uh, oh, yeah. but also you know the flashback episode 16 the whole final fight with Lance and his whoever the fuck that was the traitor where it's like a 12 minute fight scene and we go to a bunch of different places to like set the scene of the overall battle 
through the lens of Lance trying to like achieve his goal of I don't know not dying and keeping the king from being murdered by monsters. Yeah. When they did that episode, they really felt nostalgic for their uh, Clone Wars days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They were like, I just want to do all that. I remember that train fight. I want to do something like that again. Yeah. All, all we were missing was lightsabers, but I'm glad it was like whole ass swords you know yes it kept it real to its universe we may be yes. an, an alien race with superior technology but <laughs> what's better than a cold hard steel sword in your hand now the blaster and, <laughs> and like just the i won't say it man the digivolution was just so clean because that's what it was you can't tell me otherwise i was a straight i can but you're gonna deny it uh, i will so it's that was clean. I just, like, I don't know. It's just so hard to fathom that this guy canceled. Like, when you go back and you look at things, it's like, I don't know. I mean, Teen Titans technically got canceled, so there's no pleasing the early 2010s. I'll tell you the exact reason this got canceled. Okay. And I think it happened in episode 18, and it was all downhill from there. Was it the titties? No, it wasn't the titties. <laughs> okay. I missed that part entirely. Let's go rewatch it right now. Um, <laughs> no, um, it was when the U.S. Army got broke out its giant robot, the Hammer. Oh shit! And the Hammer was going Hammer time on the giant beastoid the kaiju that was causing problems because at this point we had sacrificed our robot and we could no longer form the symbiotic titan and people the, in a bad way yeah the team was on an adventure to bring it back okay mm -hmm. but the u.s army was like we have our own giant robot and uh they went and flexed on him so hard that this man said hit the skull crusher the goddamn robot floated in the air, stuck out one leg, <laughs> and hit a goddamn all-American leg drop like Hulk Hogan. <laughs> and that's the moment it all went downhill. <laughs> but, like, no, because they got sued. Specifically? No. Oh, that shit was funny. I was like, I could see WWE being petty and being like, yo, we gotta, we gotta sue him. And that's why it was called the Skull Crusher and not the the All American Leg Drop. But basically, it was it was a Hulk Hogan move. I can see that. <sighs> I hate so that. The, I love it. It was the, ridiculous. It was I would say so. The general great. wasn't Hulk Hogan. Like, <laughs> no, the general was like. No, the general's Don Dodge. No, I know, I know. But the general just... gives me like um, <laughs> Ray, uh, Ross from the Hulk vibes. Kind of like that, yeah. Thunderbolt yeah. Ross. Yeah, Thunderbolt Ross, yeah. Uh, okay. I wonder... You wonder. Okay, sorry, continue. I just wonder. What do you What do you wonder? What do you wonder? And I'm I just wonder... wondering if it'll come back. I'm it won't. <laughs> I, I mean, it might. Shoot, Mew Mew Power came back. I'm living my best life besides everything else that's <laughs> happening. <laughs> All right. So there's a bunch of stuff left up in the air because there's only 20 episodes. And we have a bunch of teased plot lines to develop with no answers, right? So I'm going to throw off some that come to mind personally, but feel free. If you've got one, tell me, all right? I need to know where the fuck Lance's dad went. Yep. He went yeah. into the portal beam. He didn't like, just die, right? Mm -hmm. We <laughs> like didn't see a, a body. Honest theory? Uh, the guy Solomon was talking to, who was, he was trying to get to fix, fix uh, Octus, that's Lance's dad. It has to be, right? Something. Okay. We don't know. Sure. We have sure. no idea who that motherfucker is. I sure. know. But until I, but until, uh, I am proven otherwise, that's Lance's dad. I accept I, this theory because that's all I have. <laughs> I agree. That's got to either be some other dude we would get ten more episodes about, or it's Lance's dad. <laughs> In which case, if it's Lance's dad, what happened to him? How do you get a robot hand? Seriously. You know, like... <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Octus got developed after his dad disappeared. So how the hell does he know this? Is he there? Did he just reboot him, or did he just I mean, make him all a... new? He or... shouldn't have been able to have been turned on. Or maybe Lance's dad left the parts and pieces for Octus that the king then finished the project. To which, where the fuck is the king? We saw him getting tortured at the beginning of the, the mm -hmm. show, yeah. and mm -hmm. then we didn't see anything else from him. Is he dead? Is he alive? Is there a Galaluna to even come back to? Yeah. I'd say probably. And on, and on top of that, uh, Modula, little evil general guy, traitor dude. Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> I'm oh, pretty is sure he, he still has... just gonna Is he just going to pull a Rita and just sit on his planet and just be like, throw another monster at him. This throw another Mo monster at it. This Mojo Jojo looking motherfucker. <laughs> Man said, "Give me, give me your best monster. That one, you sure? Yeah, yeah. All right. You know, if Get it doesn't work, life. you'll die, right? Yeah. <laughs> Didn't work. Oh, I'm sorry, my lord. Uh, well, <laughs> guess I'll go home now. Now you get me your best monster. <laughs> now, that said, when we do see Medulla roll in and mm -hmm. put the work on somebody, Ooh. that was that Magneto shit." Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> floating and arms and then floating around again. Effortless. My God. <laughs> but yes, it was like one episode and we have 20 more to see. That's all I needed. Teenage <laughs> drama and shit. Any other mysteries that y'all have that we want answers to? I feel like there's got to be more combination powers. Like, yeah. I feel like there's more to it. Like the whole symbioses. I feel like there's more to that. It would be cool if they like the symbiotic symbionic Jesus Christ. <laughs> um stuff was, you know, you could have just two of them and they could have pairs. Yeah. I like that it has what? to be three. It does make you think though, what if it was just Octus and one of the people there? Could they Merge ar merge the armor into Octus and go off something like that until the third person got there. Or could Lance and Alana trade armor? It's just in the watch, so <laughs> why can't they use the other person's stuff? I don't. I felt know. like it was like ingrained in their DNA or something. Well, it's it's the watches it's and their ability. Just yeah, it's a watch. The, it's the watch. I mean, but like, so you could just give the watch to another person. I could transport. Yeah. It. Well, that's how the giant robots work, right? That's the but maybe not the the, um, the normal. I feel like there soldier. has to be something. They never like... explained it or anything. Yeah, Lance really is good. the only one we see using it, even though in the flashback we see the uh, traitor student kid uh, using one of the mechs too. So, so that's what I'm saying. Like, I want more explanation on like that, like the whole like, like. So what I'm saying, can Kimmy or Kristen just put on the watch and be like, "Yo, I'm out here, gang." Or is it something specific to their DNA that like, like See that was gonna know, be in the season two finale, but we never Are the it. mechs their mothers? <laughs> what happened to Adam? You know what, <laughs> Kai? God damn it. <laughs> we we never saw anyone's mom. So maybe they are. It's very specifically, yeah, no one's mom. Hmm. Oh my god, they Disneyed it. The moms are Not dead. <laughs> Disney did, it, but <laughs> even Gellion did. The robots are their mom. Yes. Oh. <laughs> um. Yeah. No. Uh. Yeah. Questions galore. I love it. Yeah. Uh, and I also hate it because this stuff happened. The show released in 2010. It's 2022. And back but, in I think hey, 2018. Look. 2018 was it? Yeah. Like Gendy did an interview with Sci Fi Wire. And the link is fucking broken, man. I'm trying to get yeah. the first-hand source, and Bullshit. they're not keeping their stuff up. Anyways, I digress. Yeah. Gendy hey. had mentioned that his biggest regret was that uh, Symbionic Titan was canceled, and he's got like ten more scripts planned. Well, yeah, and uh, I want to that note. 
Panny and Stocking took 12 years to get a season two. It can happen, goddammit! Mew Mew Power. Like, y'all do not understand. Mew Mew Power. 25 years. I am a hopeful little bean right now. Because everything, animation-wise, I mean... seemingly happening. And even Noragami was like... We hear you. They tweeted out, we hear you. And that's all they said. You so never I'm told hopeful. me this. Why did you never tell me Because I didn't want to give you the hope that I have. I want hope. All right. I want to I wanna <laughs> temper <laughs> this, this. I want to temper. And Samurai be, Jack season five. I want to be the downer. Okay, that is a more <laughs> accurate reference. That's what I was for trying to do, yeah. the market. It, that we're dealing yeah. with, right? I'm just saying. Yeah, it happen. would literally have to go down the same road where a more mature studio picks it up and they run with that. That being said, Cartoon Network is owned by HBO. Well, now they're owned by Discovery so... Plus. Okay, well. Gendy has a track record of bringing back the shit that he's finished. So yes, I'll yeah. take it. He okay. came back and did Dexter's Lab. He came back with Samurai Jack. Why not? It's got a shot. Put it on the streaming service. It'll work out. I mean, we've you seen did, how well... You did it with uh, Young Justice. You can do it with this. Yes. Apparently, Johnny Test even came back. It was, like, super popular now with the younger folk. Unfortunate. It's not my Johnny Test, but <sighs> I'm happy it can exist for somebody else. It'll never be Saturday morning Burger King croissant witch run then come back home and watch it before I go to Dab's at. Um, My God. Yep. I but anyway. I lived everything. <laughs> <laughs> Shaolin Showdown. Next. But, oh, um, no, no. oh, no. We got a sequel season. No one just wants to talk about it. Yeah, we will not talk about that. Um, but <laughs> I have, like, in terms of cartoons, seeing things finished that I want to see, um, this is up there. Like, Symbiotic Titan... My uh, Super Monkey Team Hyperforce Go is another one. And, like, Oban Star Racers. Because those three things, like, ended on the biggest cliffhangers. Like, I, I need it. So, hopefully, Gindy, if you're listening, which you should be because this podcast is fire, I need you to bring back Symbiotic Titan. Just tell me what I gotta do. I'll go buy the Blu-rays. I'll... Make I'll a sacrifice and give him the money to do it because that's literally all he's waiting for. Can he wait 15 years? I'm trying, <laughs> but the struggle's hard. I gotta go through three recessions. <laughs> that's all for you, Damien. Um, oh, you. <laughs> you, you almost went a whole podcast without that cat. <laughs> you almost went a whole podcast without the cat. You didn't see it in the background the whole time? <laughs> no, it's different. It didn't like come and spray the butt up into the lens. Which, okay. <laughs> Sam Bionic Titan. Bye, Sam. That's a good show. It deserves, <laughs> it deserves funding and time for Gendy to continue with his boys, Brian Andrews and Paul Rudish. This Please. inspires me. This gives me hope that one day, when we're all incredible professionals, we can come back together and make cool shit just because. Yes. With no cats involved. After 15 years in the industry. <laughs> Don't forget, the time marches on. Um, Just like... <laughs> time waits for no one. Everything here at Content Breaker. You can catch us on all your podcasts. We're talking Spotify, iTunes, Amazon Podcast, at Content Breaker, or the website, mm-hmm. contentbreaker.com. It's Content a direct Breaker. link to the podcast. <gasps> I paid $12 Ooh. for that shit. It's easy peasy contentbreaker.com. Gentlemen, we can find you at. You can find me at Static Dreads on Twitter with a Z because I'm cool. Also, check out our Twitter at Content Breaker. Um, that's underscore Content Breaker. And check out our Instagram at Content underscore Breaker. The find Twitter me. is not oh. underscored. Strange. <laughs> Find me uh, at Strangely Int on Twitter. Look for Strangely Entertaining on YouTube and Twitch. And on Twitch, I stream 9 p.m. Central Time. Go team. <laughs> and of course, the other product, so, your typical show protagonist on all your podcasts. It's Gandy Month. Gandy, Gandy. What are we talking about next week? 
Uh, we got him back to uh, where he had... Not where he started, but where he truly started to take off. Dexter's Lab. In Dexter's Lab. Next week. On Geniba.